Welcome back, everybody. This is Mr. Paredes, and today's assignment is Module 8, Lesson 1, Understand and Apply Properties to Solve One-Step Inequalities. This is pages 263 to 270. The lesson that we're going to be covering in this video is the Build Understanding and Step It Out on page pages 264 through 266, Task 1 through 4. But first, let's connect to vocabulary. The solution of an inequality is a value or values that makes an inequality true. So let's look at the build understanding on page 264. Recall that an equation is a mathematical sentence showing that two quantities are equal or equivalent. Likewise, an inequality is a mathematical sentence showing that two quantities are not equivalent. The meanings of inequality symbols are shown in the table. So we have our greater than symbol, right, which opens to the left, meaning the number to the left is greater than the number to the right. Then we have our less than symbol, which opens to the right, meaning the greater number is to the right. Then we have the greater than or equal to. Notice the little line underneath, almost, almost like an equal, equal sign, half of an equal sign. So it's it could be equal to it, but we know for sure that it's greater than that number to the right. And then we have less than or equal to, which has the same little bar underneath, right? And it's showing equality but it also shows that it could be less than the number to the right. And remember, you're always putting the opening to the bigger number, okay? The number line shows X is less than or equal to 365. Note that the closed circle represents or equal to in the inequality to indicate the inclusion of 365. So that means in this number line, it's showing that not only is it less than 365, it could be equal to, that's why we have the closed circle. If it was just less than, it would be just an open circle. So let's look at task one. A submarine is at sea level, and it descends with a rate of change of negative 10 feet per second, meaning it's dropping 10 feet per second. Part A, write an inequality to represent the time t it takes the submarine to reach an elevation of negative 140 feet or deeper. So, we know that we want it to go negative 140 or deeper, right? And we're using T for time. And the rate of change that's going to go with this variable is negative 10. So we have negative 10 T. And we got to put in an inequality there and compare it to negative 140 feet. Now remember, we're trying to get 140 feet or deeper meaning we want to get to negative 140 or lower, right? So whatever this amount is on the left side, it has to be deeper than the negative 140. So it's going to be less than because we're, we want it to be more negative, but it can also be equal to negative 140. Part B, write three values for T that will make the inequality from part A true. Substitute each value in the inequality to check. Then describe the set of numbers that can make the inequality true. Well, we want to make something that's going to be I mean, it, we know it can be equal to 140 or negative 140. And I know 
10 times 14 equals 140. So let's do negative 10 times 14. And that would give me negative 140. So I know 14 will work because that will give me the equal to. Now, if I went negative 10 times 13, that's going to give me negative 130. Well, I know negative 130 is not less than or equal to negative 140. Right? So this is not going to work. So I can't use 13. But let's try 15. That would give me negative 150. And that is definitely less than 100, negative 140. So I know 15 works and 14 works. 13 did not because it was bigger because it was negative 130. So anything that I put that's going to be less than 14 is not going to work. So I know 14 and 15 work. My third number, I could put anything bigger than 14 or 15. I can use 16. I can use 20. I can use 100, right? Any one of those. But for this, I'm just going to say 14, 15. And let's go ahead and say uh, negative 10 times 21 would give me negative 210, which is definitely less than negative 140. And I know that seems weird because you look at positive values, 210 would be bigger than a positive 140, but we're looking at them as, as negatives, right? This is more negative. So negative 210 is a lot less than negative 140. So I know those three numbers work. And what I do know is it has to be greater than or equal to 14. So let's look at part C. Solve the inequality from part A by writing a simple inequality that describes all of the numbers that will make the inequality true. Write an inequality symbol in the first box and a number in the second box. Well, if you remember in part B, we knew that everything had to be greater than or equal to 14. So for this inequality, I know T, the time, has to be greater than or equal to 14 because we couldn't use anything less than 14 to make it true. So that would give us our inequality. Part D, graph the inequality from part C. Can the submarine reach an elevation of negative 140 feet or deeper in less than 14 seconds? Well, I know I'm going to mark at 14 and I'm going to put a closed circle because it's equal to, right? It, in, it includes 14. Now, I am going to shade to the right because it is greater than or equal to 14. Now, to answer the second part, can the submarine reach an elevation of negative 140 feet or deeper in less than 14 seconds? No. It will take at least 14 seconds, right? That's the, the least amount of time it will take. Part E. How are solving negative 10t equals negative 140 and negative 10t is less than or equal to negative 140 alike? And how are they different? Well, if I wanted to solve these, I would have to divide by negative 10 to both sides, right? And on this one, I would do the same thing. So that's how they're the same. Now, how are they different? Well, they're different because for the inequality, we reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. 
if you notice this equation right here, right? When we did T is greater than or equal to 14. If I were to solve these, like I did, right? We divide by negative 10. These would cancel and I'd have T equals 14. Well, when I divide over here, I get T by itself, but if I leave the inequality symbol the same, I get T is less than or equal to 14. Those aren't the same. So because I divided by a negative number, I had to switch or reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. So that's how they're different. And we'll get more into that as we move along in this lesson. All right, so let's look at task two on page 265. During the spring rains, the water level in a lake rises. Although the lake has a dam, when the water reaches the top of the dam, water will begin flowing over the top. Part A, write an inequality that expresses how much more the lake can rise R so that the water does not flow over the top of the dam. So, based on our information in the picture, I know the top of the dam is 152 feet and the lake water level is 127 feet, right? And we want to know an inequality or write an inequality that compares these also when the lake rises, right? Using R. So I know I have 152 feet, right? That's with one number that we're comparing. The other side, I have the water level, which is 127 feet, but it can rise, right? They have that cushion there. So plus R, and we just have to put an inequality there. So we need to decide, is it less than or greater than? Well, obviously we want the water to be less than the height of the dam, right? We don't want it to go over, that would be pointless. So we know on the, the top of the dam has to be greater than the water level, right? But it can be equal to, because if we got water all the way to 152 feet, then it's still stopping the water and that's all right. So we know the lake water level plus the rise should be less than or equal to 152 feet. So that way it doesn't flow over. Part B, write three values for R that will make the inequality from part A true. Then write and graph a simple inequality that describes all of the numbers that will make the inequality true. Well, like we did on task one, you can come up with different numbers, right? Um, if I plug in a zero, 127 plus zero equals 127, that's definitely less than 152. So zero works. Um, if I use a number like 10, 127 plus 10, that would give me 137, which is less than 152. That's all right. But what about what makes it equal to 152? I want to see what's going to make it equal. And... I know the difference between 152 and 127 is 25. So if I use 25, that gives me 152, which would still make this statement true, right? So 10, 25 work. Those are numbers that work, and I'm going to go ahead and list them here. 
0, 10, 25. But if I plug in a number like 26, that's going to put me just above 152. It's going to put me at 153. That's no good. Um, even if I put in 25.1, that's too much. Right? So the max amount of water that can be, that it could rise is, uh, is 25 feet. Right? That's the cushion. So I know that the water level has to be, or the rise rather, not, not the water level, but the rise has to be less than or equal to 25. So now that I have my inequality, I want to graph this on the number line. So I'm going to look at putting my circle at 25. Now, because it's less than or equal to, I need it to be a closed circle, right? Has to be closed. If it was just less than, then I could have an open circle, but I have to include 25. Now, it's less than. Less than means we're going to be smaller than 25, so I need to go this way with my shaded portion. And that's it. We have our equation and we have our graph. All right. So here it says the properties of equality you used when solving equations hold true for inequalities with one exception. When you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must reverse the inequality symbol. Okay. And it's only when you multiply or divide, all right, by the negative number. Not when you add or, or, or subtract, it's when you multiply or divide a negative number to both sides, okay? So let's look at task three. Apply properties of inequalities to solve each inequality. Part A, we have M minus 0.3 is greater than 1.45. Well, in order to get M by itself, I want to move that minus 0 0.3. And I would do the inverse, right? The inverse operation, which is the opposite. So instead of subtracting, we add 0 0.3 to both sides. These will cancel. So I have just M by itself on the left. And when I add these together, 1.45 plus 0 0.3, I get 1.75. So M is greater than 1.75, right? The symbols stayed the same. They didn't reverse because we just added 0 0.3. Now let's look at part B. I have 3.5 times N is less than or equal to 7. Well, again, because it's multiplication, we do the inverse. So we're going to divide by 3.5 to both sides. And because it's a positive 3.5, the symbols stay the same. These cancel, and I just have n is less than or equal to 2. Part C, negative 2 is greater than or equal to B plus 1 eighth. So again, I want to get B all by itself. So I'm going to move that 1 eighth. And we're adding that. So the inverse, subtract it. And we do that to both sides. Now remember, this is subtracting, right? We're subtracting it not dividing a negative number. So the symbol stays the same. These are going to cancel, and I have B all by itself on the right side. Negative 2 minus 1 eighth, they're both negative, so I'm going to add them together and keep the sign. 2 plus 1 eighth is just 2 and 1 eighth. So that means negative 2 and 1 eighth 
is greater than or equal to B. But we like to have the variable on the left side. We like to have it first. So when I put that first, you got to think of it as just flipping it around, right? So we have to flip the sign around. So that way it's still smaller than the negative two and one eighth. Part D, negative one half times Y is less than six. Well, we have the negative one half that's being multiplied to Y. And whenever we're trying to move a fraction from uh, away from a variable, we multiply by the reciprocal, right? If it's being multiplied, we want to just multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of negative one half is negative two over one. And we do that to both sides. Now, the reason this makes sense is because if you look at the original one, we're multiplying one times Y and we're dividing two into Y, right? So right here, we're doing the opposite, which is multiply by two and divide by one. And in this case, we go with the negative as well. It's they're both negative. So on this left side, the twos cancel, the ones cancel along with the negative. So I just have Y by itself. And if you notice, they reversed the symbol, right? Because we're multiplying by a negative. Negative two over one times six is just gonna be negative 12. So that means Y is greater than negative 12. Part E, we have negative X is less than negative four. Well, technically it's like saying it's negative one times X, or we could say that, right? It's, there's a negative one in front of X. So we want to move that and I want to do the opposite. So you can divide by one or negative one. You can multiply by negative one in this case, because it's not going to change it, right? It's totally up to you. And I'm just going to show you in two different colors. So if you want it, you could divide by negative one. That's what I would normally do right? The negatives will cancel. You'll have X as a positive. We reverse the symbol, but we're still going to get the same answer because the negative times the negative on the right side is going to be positive and one times four is just four. Okay. But I just wanted to show you either way is okay. You can just multiply by negative one or you can divide by negative one. Okay. When you're dealing with just negative one. Part F, negative 2 over 3A is greater than 6. Well, again, I want to remove the A from being in the numerator, right? I want to separate that. Um, instead of negative 2A over 3, we could say it's negative 2 thirds A, which is how I originally read it. So from here, we're just going to multiply by the reciprocal, right? So I'm going to go negative three over two. We just flip it. On the left side, the twos cancel, the threes cancel along with the negative, and we have A by itself. The sign has already been reversed. And then I'm going to go six times negative three would give me negative 18 and it's over two and I can reduce that to negative nine because two goes into 18 nine times. So that means our final answer would be A is less than negative nine. So let's look at task four on page 266. Layla is designing a rectangular table. What is the range of values for X if the area of the table shown is to be 12 square feet or less? 
So we have our table. It's three feet by X over four feet. And part A is telling us what is the inequality using the formula for the area of a rectangle. So the area of a rectangle is length times width or base times height, depending on what you want to say. The area for this table has to be 12 square feet or less, right? So it's less than or equal to 12 square feet. And I know here's my length, there's the width. And I'm going to multiply multiply those together. I'm going to set that up. So I have 3 times x over 4. And it's less than equal to 12. Okay. And I can simplify this a little bit better. And I'm going to 3 times x is just 3x over 4. And it's less than or equal to 12. And that would be my inequality that I want to use. Part B, solve the inequality for X. Well, to solve it, we need to multiply by the reciprocal, right? Because I have three over four X, essentially. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. And I'm just going to rewrite it up here on the top. So I have 3 over 4, and let's put the x, less than, equal to 12. And we're going to multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. This is a positive number, so we don't have to worry about changing the symbol. It's going to stay the same. 3 can go into 12 four times. 3 goes into itself once. 4 times 4 is 16. So when we solve for the inequality, I know that the value of x has to be less than or equal to 16. Now part C, give the range of values for x that are reasonable in the context of this problem and graph the solution. Well, I know it has to be less than 16 or greater than 16, or, I'm sorry, less than or equal to 16, right? But the side length has to be positive regardless. We can't have a negative value for a table length. Right? You've never heard of a negative four foot wide table. Okay? And there's no way it can be zero. So it must be greater than zero. Because if it was zero, it wouldn't be there. So when I graph this, I know I'm going to have a circle at 16 and a circle at 0. Now the circle at 16, I'm going to close it because it can be equal to 16 as well. At 0, it can't be. There's no way it's going to be 0. So when I shade this, it's going to go in between the 0 and 16, but my 0 is open and the 16 is closed to show that it can include 16. So this would be greater than zero, but less than or equal to 16. So that's it for module eight, lesson one. I hope the video was helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did to either one or both of those, click like to let me know. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe so that way you're getting notifications when I post these new videos um, for the new lessons that we're doing. Make sure you're completing and submitting all of your work. And as always, guys, take care.